Lord Jesus, as we light the first candle and begin our Advent journey, inflame our hearts with the gift of hope as we prepare and await for the miracle of your birth. How beautiful is this, being together as one preparing the way of the Lord. Friends, hope is our theme this first week of Advent, and the butterfly, our image, reminding us of the letting go and surrendering needed for a more beautiful life to come forth. So glad you're with us. I'm Father Ron. This is the God Minute. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, may hope stir within me. And my mouth shall shall declare your your grace. An Advent Hymn. On Jordan's bank, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of the King of Kings. Then cleansed be every breast from sin. Make straight the way for God within. Prepare we in our hearts a home where such a mighty guest may come. For thou art our salvation, Lord, our refuge, and our great reward. Without thy grace we waste away like flowers that wither and decay. All praise, Eternal Son, to Thee, whose advent doth Thy people free, whom with the Father we adore, and Holy Ghost forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. I know indeed how to live in humble circumstances. I know also how to live with abundance. In every circumstance and in all things, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and hungry, of living in abundance and of being in need. I have the strength for everything through him who empowers me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How do you measure maturity? I think the standard answer in Western culture is that we grow, and we grow up first as dependent, then we gain independence, and ultimately 
we grow into interdependence. Just prior to our passage today, St. Paul declares, For I have learned in whatever situation I find myself to be self-sufficient. And then, just following our passage, he says, Still, it was kind of you to share in my distress. He was in prison. The point of the passage is not self-sufficiency, independence, but about, I have strength for everything through him who empowers me. I have arrived at the wisdom of interdependence. How many of you wake up each morning declaring to yourself, I'm going to overemphasize a value, a good, so as to deceive myself? Now, speaking only for myself, I note that I do this all the time, this overemphasizing. An example, you have undertaken a project that requires help, and you conclude at some point it would have been easier, more efficient to have done it yourself. Likely sometimes this proves true, but if adopted as best practice, it can only lead to our minimizing it, what we can accomplish alone. This is the great self-sufficiency fallacy. I need God, God's help, God's wisdom, God's life and power, always. The one who empowers me. And how does God ordinarily accomplish this? We are made in the image and likeness of the triune God, the very foundation for our embracing the truth that we, like God, are social beings. We are God's instruments of grace for each other. How fortunate for us to end the day if we can say like Paul, it was kind of you to share in my distress, my need. Thanks for your help. We can overemphasize independence, a good. Self-sufficiency, also a good. Efficiency, another good and thus block the grace of the one who empowers us from entering our desires, our hopes, and our efforts. God's grace never diminishes us, and Paul reminds us, it empowers us. It is the foundation of being church, believers together, as fallible as we can be, of being family, friends, parishioners, community members, God's instruments of our interdependence leading to fullness of life. So remember, we are reminded by St. Paul, we go to God together. We need each other to become more. Yes, this is God's messy plan for humanity. We are needy and graced blessed by the one who empowers us. With hope and trust, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, source of everlasting light, as we begin our Advent journey, banish the shadows of despair and fear and ignite within us the ember of hope that we, like St. Paul, may always find our reliance and strength only with you. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder to periodically check our app blog 
and website, blog, and social platforms for additional prayers and resources that we put together that uh, might nourish your Advent journey each week. And so one of those things is a night prayer that we will say, or you will, (laughs) if you choose, before you go to bed each night. So the night prayer changes every week based on our theme. So check that out and let the end of your day be wrapped in prayer as you go to bed. Some fun stuff that will be up there periodically. But for now, friends, thank you for beginning our journey together, as Father Jim so beautifully shared with us in the reflection. And may God's blessing now go with you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in hope, beloved of God, and we'll see you tomorrow.